right now. <laughs> so welcome to the info session for the um, teams who are intending to join from the Asia Pacific region for the SCF Startup Bootcamp. As you know, um, the info session is pretty much to give you like a an understanding of what to expect from the bootcamp, hear from past participants and experienced mentors, and also get a feel of what are some of the activities that you would eventually get to do if you get selected to participate in the bootcamp. So this is just a rundown of what and when, you know, we'll be talking about during um, the, the info session today. And the very first thing to really just talk about is, um, the SCF Bootcamp is in collaboration with DFS Lab and the Stella Development Foundation. Um, I'm Gifts, I work with DFS Lab and we are an early stage investor supporting the most exciting startups that are building the digital economy in Africa. But aside our investment um, work, we also have an active research and consulting practice, which gives room for us to work with clients like Stella to implement innovation programs. So Anka would um, talk a bit more about the Stella organization, the SCF, and then I would kick it off from there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. As you can read on the slide, um, my name is Anka Liu. I'm from the Stella Development Foundation, and the Stella Development Foundation is a nonprofit founded in 2014 to support development and growth of the open source Stellar network. Um, Stellar is uh, is an open source blockchain network. It's a layer one. Um, you can build all sorts of applications on it, including for like remittances, payments. And recently, we've also launched our new native smart contract platform called Sorabon, uh, which opens up a, a green field space of innovation. And very excited to be here. Thank you so much, Gif, for introducing. So that's kind of where the Stellar Community Fund goes in. So the Stellar Community Fund is an open application award program really to uh, boost development for startups and developers building on both these powerful technologies, Stellar and Sorbonne. Um, so the SDF, which is our, um, which is our abbreviation, so we have SDF, which is the Stellar Development Foundation, SCF, which is the Stellar Community Fund. Um, so SCF is managed by the Stellar Development Foundation, but re really relies on community input for a lot of things, including like award allocation, uh, structure discussion, uh, and more. So since uh, we, have, we actually had, uh, we're around since 2016, one of the early ones in the space. Uh, so far, we've uh, awarded uh, uh, over 210 million XLM uh, to over 415 award recipients. And we've also started to incorporate more of these types of boot camps into the SCF. Um, and we have supported over 50 plus boot camp participants so far with a growing community of 2,600 people. So very excited for this. Um, and uh, yeah, perfect. Thank you, Gift. So the Stella Community Fund actually has two programs. Um, one is the awards, which is a kind of a main program where every four weeks developers and startups can request funding up to $150,000 worth of XLM. Uh, for around three month projects. Um, funding for SCF funding is really meant to boost development and cover the cost necessary and really experiment and, uh, and build the product uh, up onto like liveness. And then there is this awesome SCF startup camp. And I'll, I'll let you um, say a little bit more in detail, but we have recently been starting uh, to work with the FS lab um, to host this five day long bootcamp in conjunction with the SCF, really meant to accelerate projects from idea to MVP stage. And even like having really awesome additions such as in investor demo day and some excellent prizes. And kind of how these two programs work together is that uh, if you already know like totally what to build on a Stellar or, or Sorobon, like you have your whole plan like figured out, SCF awards is your place to go. Let's say if you are relatively new, you have a startup or you have an existing product or and you you don't exactly know, you're thinking this is interesting, but you don't exactly know and you don't exactly know where to start. So SCF Startup Camp is the way to go and they're not mutually exclusive, so you can apply to either program. And usually like a really great way to get started is the Startup Camp. It's like a five days, you only have to sign up very light application. 
And once you kind of realize, okay, Stellar or Sorbonne, this is the way to go, you can uh, flow directly into SCF awards. So that's kind of the correlation, I think. Um, but uh, GIF will tell you a bit more. Or should I do it or will you do a GIF? Up to you. You, you can do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah, I didn't quite know if you wanted to go into it. But uh, yeah, so the SCF Startup Camp, it's five days. It's all virtual. It will happen on three time zones. So we have like Asia Pacific, uh, Europe, Middle East, and Africa, and uh, North, Central, and South America. And so this is really to um, enable builders globally to, to build on these powerful technologies. So we have Stellar, we have Sorbonne, um, there's, and GIF will go into this more detail. We have several exercises that will help people accelerate their Stellar or Sorbonne based projects. What really important is here that uh, we, can, we can connect within these five days, we, like, uh, we get people's availability and we, we, we set people's bandwidth and they will be like people from the Stellar Development Foundation, the Stellar community and ecosystem will be able to, uh, will be able to support the participating teams uh, directly with their solution. And this is really important because usually uh, we, this doesn't happen. Uh, usually it's like very hard to actually connect people with teams. And now because of the bootcamp, you have this exclusive access to these amazing uh, experts in the field. Yeah, and uh, I think also not to mention the exercises that we will go through. So that's gift I will give to you. Yes, um, I'm just going to put up the slides again. And I Perfect. Oh. So that's it from my end. So the bootcamp days are actually on April 21st, uh, 17th until the 21st. And the uh, kind of our investor mm -hmm. demo day, which is for the top 10 finalists, is on uh, the next week, on the Wednesday, I believe, which is April 26th. 26th. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Anka. I was, I was just saying that um, at the FS Lab, we're super excited to be working again with, with the team to, you know, put together this um, startup camp. Um, just to say that at, um, for the startup camp, we, we approach it through a design sprint model. So as opposed to the ideal accelerator or incubator model that you're probably aware of, through the design sprint model, we try to ensure that we're supporting startups to spend less time, but also get to um, achieve their solutions in that short amount of time. So the big idea is that you go, you're going to be building within five days, including um, the, the investor demo day, or rather the community demo day that Anka mentioned about. And then throughout those five days, we'll be taking you through step-by-step -step processes or step-by-step -step, um, design sprint activities that you can you know, um, use to take your idea into a validated, validated product. This design sprint model is, was, it was divine, um, designed by um, some leaders at Google. And we at DFS Lab we strongly believe that through this model, startups or founders can actually spend less time in, in coming up with your solutions. So yeah, you come with an idea to the bootcamp or not. And within that five days, you can be rest assured to leave with a validated product. Um, during this info session, I see that Joseph um, already joined. We have two um, speakers who will be sharing their experiences as a past participant and also um, their experience just building, you know, um, in Web3 and then also give you an idea of, you know, what the experience will do that before we go right into breaking down the activities that you should expect from the bootcamp. So to join us for this session is Nabarun. Um, is the founder of Ortify Network and Joseph Lim, who is the found the co-founder of Coin Oil. I see that they've joined us. So um, Nabarun and Joseph, please feel free to unmute, just so that. And if you can turn on your videos, just so we can start up with the fireside chat session. Sure, definitely. Great. Um, so we have Navarone from Ortify Network and then Joseph from Coin Oil. I've put together um, some questions that I'd be asking you guys just to drive the conversations and then 
feel free to share, you know, your experience and, you know, tips for the um, intending participants that are hoping to join this um, setup. Come. So let's start out first with introductions. So um, and maybe Nabaru, you could start out with, you know, just telling us about yourself, um, what you're building at Spotify Network, and then Joseph can do the same. Sure, sure. Definitely. Thank you. So uh, I've been building startups since last uh, 10 years and currently building my fourth company. Uh, so I'm, I've been spending uh, most of my time in commerce, supply chain, retail and payment in, uh, field. So I've raised $5.5 million from Microsoft Venture, Silicon Road Venture and other investors previously, right? So currently uh, building something that problem faced by like billions of people uh, every single day, right? So we're actually building what if I solve uh, supply chain traceability end to end on also the payment module, like mostly the cross-border payment, right? So the building the entire ecosystem around supply chain commerce and, and payment. Uh, so yeah, we've been working from last uh, one and a half years. We have 100 customers onboarded right now in the platform, uh, raised $1.9 million funding and also uh, been through uh, SCF last year. So yeah, that's about me. Thank you. Over to you, Joseph. Yeah, hi, thanks for having me. Uh, Joseph here, I'm the CEO and co-founder of CoinHall, uh, also an advisor for Seller Development Foundation. So um, I got into the space in 2018, so was in a fund that invested in blockchain then, uh, went on to run uh, blockchain accelerators for a couple of years and now working on CoinHall. So at CoinHall, um, trying to improve U UI UX for, uh, for, for DeFi ecosystems. Currently, we are focused on Cosmos, so we are one-stop platform for trading, uh, real-time price charts data. Um, we're also building another product called Genie, which is uh, to better improve incentive mechanisms. So you could do stuff like uh, airdrops to um, people, uh, wallets which hit a very specific on-chain parameter. For example, like I want to target the most active wallets with like uh, $10,000 transaction volume on this specific protocol. So think like Google Ads, but like on drugs, like for a very specific a uh, group of users, you can set up a campaign, you can do rewards. So yeah, building a bunch of stuff in Web3. So yeah, excited to be here. Thank you, Joseph. So Nabaran, you mentioned that you participated at the SEF Startup Camp last year. Could you share with us what that experience was like and what stood out for you and your team while you were participating during the Startup Camp? Sure, sure, definitely. So I was part of the Stellar community before that, even I think I've been part of since 2018 or 19. So following the uh, work uh, Stellar is doing from last few years, right? And we joined, uh, so as I said, like we also have a payment model. So uh, supply chain and other thing is already done and we're already having uh, customers. But uh, we needed some help and some refinement uh, on the payment module. And that's the reason we joined uh, the bootcamp. So definitely bootcamp was really helpful for us to kind of refine the idea and also kind of building the initial MVP and then kind of go back to uh, the boarding room and also kind of put some thoughts around it, right? So I think I would say definitely uh, refinement of the idea, building the MVP and also connection. So uh, the, the help we got from seller community and also the DSF, DSF lab is, is definitely uh, something you will know, uh, we'll, we'll not get in, in all the places, right? And uh, yeah, I think I think that's what we got from from this uh, bootcamp. Thank you so much. Um, um, over to you, Joseph. I know that you mentioned that you've been advising the Stella Development Foundation for a while, and then you've also had like a bunch of experience just even building um, corn oil. Um, I think my question for you would be: uh, so, what are some of the interesting products that you? What products do you think are interesting to consider to start building in this current cycle? Yep, uh, I think a couple of themes right now. So there are people working on stuff like Web3 Social, uh, people working on better incentive mechanisms for DeFi. Um, I think products that drive real tangible outcomes for end users that would be, be uh, what, what would, I, I think, have a better chance of getting traction this this cycle uh what was here in the, the the past bull market we saw a lot of uh, people just following um common narratives like play to earn like um yield farming uh we, we saw quite a number of these mechanisms were not very sustainable so i think uh what's 
personally for my company, what, what I think is the most important is to, to build a relationship with the end user. So um, we are building features, tools to better uh, empower this, right? So how can you uh, drive more activity with a single user? How can you get the person to return on a more common, uh, uh, um, come back more often to the, to the application, to the platform? So I think if you're building stuff around this, as long as you uh, hold a relationship with the end uh, Web3 consumer, you could actually distribute like a whole bunch of different products. So, yeah. Thank you. Um, so we're going to the end of this fireside chat and there's just one last question for each of you to answer. Um, so Nabarun, could you share with us um, what stood out for you um, during the bootcamp and what are some of the tips that you can share with upcoming or intending teams who are looking at participating? I think uh, I would say the support because uh, let's say if you face some issues and kind of you need some guidance, so you can reach out to anyone in the community and they'll help you out, right? And I used to get response like every few minutes. So, uh, and I've been been through multiple accelerator in my entire uh, startup journey, Microsoft, Techstar, YC, and many other places, right? And I would definitely suggest all the uh, startup to either go through accelerator or a bootcamp. Uh, it will help you to refine your uh, journey and idea from idea to MVP, right? And that's that's very required, right? And also it will uh, help you to get mentors and a network. And, and the support. Uh, so I would say, yeah, getting the response and getting the support was definitely commendable for us. Thank you, Navarun, so much for your time. I'm just, if I just saw that um, Morgan had asked a question in the chat, so I'm just going to merge both questions together. Um, so Morgan is wondering if you could share some insights. Okay, actually two questions. Okay, two questions here. What's been the biggest pain points of user churn in your products? Um, and if it's possible for you to share some insights on common pitfalls. So this is kind of like linked to the lessons learned question I was going to ask earlier. Yeah, yeah, great question. I, I think what's different from Web2 and Web3 is uh, in Web3, your network effects come like super uh, quickly. So uh, when we first started the platform, I think we hit from like zero to 100K monthly active users in maybe like two months. Um, bear market crash, it goes down to as much as like 90-95% uh, drop in your, your monthly active volumes. So um, pitfalls um, or lessons to be learned. Uh, I, I think this, this is just very nuanced to Web3, right? The, the attention span is very short. Uh, people, uh, you, you would hear them say, rotate between different ecosystems, let's say from one chain to another super fast. So uh, when there's like a narrative and this specific ecosystem chain or type of application is a narrative, like super use, a lot of users liquidity, they just flow in, right? They start using your application. You look like, uh, looks like, oh, it's top of the world for you, right? But that's, it's very vulnerable. So it's, it's different from like Web2, like you don't see, let's say Uber, like having its uh, users the next day um, because of like a certain market condition or a certain change in narrative, very unlikely, right? Unless, of course, it's like some huge regulatory thing that says, okay, it's illegal to like be a driver for Uber, right? Then may maybe you see some huge trend there. But Web3, it's like, it could be literally like the winds uh, changing, right? Um, and, and users would flow, capital would flow. So I think uh, pitfalls, I, I think it's good to diversify because the, the time horizon is really too short for, for the crypto market currently to, to see like, oh, this ecosystem is like super, super clear winner. I think it's worth like hedging your bets, hedging in terms of like um, products that you are building because the, the key assumptions get challenged like super fast, right? If you look at like people are talking about play to earn, people were saying like the, the biggest player was like X Infinity. They were like gods for like a few months, right? And then suddenly uh, the winds change. Everyone's like, oh, that's so unsustainable. Dual token models, crappy. Uh, next thing they look like, oh, the, the, the new kind of content you see is like, oh, what are, were their pitfalls? What should you not learn from them? So it's like from like gods to docs, you can, it changes like super fast. So yeah, I, I think if you stick to like print, uh, first principles and see like what, what kind of real uh, value you are providing for the end user, if, if that's like authentic, uh, yeah, I, I guess you would reduce your churn versus something that's like just, I don't know, yield based based on APR, some rewards uh, thing. If it's like 
you're attracting users based on like something shiny. It's like when something shinier pops up, people just leave, right? So you gotta really be providing some real value. Yeah, hope, hope that helped. Thank you so much, Joseph and Nabaron, for your time. Um, we really do appreciate you just coming to share. And we hope that um, for everything you've, you've spoken here, we hope that intending teams can pick out one or two lessons on insight as they go out to either participate in the bootcamp or you know, go out to build their solutions. Um, so yes, I will add over to talking more about what to expect. Having heard from um, Nabaron and Joseph, what can you expect at the bootcamp? So the very first thing is um, the bootcamp is made majorly made up of you know the design sprint activities within those five days that takes you from coming up with an idea to a validated product. But it also features um, activities like workshops and office hours where you get to meet um, ex technical experts from the Stellar community, mentors who are really just keen on supporting you and ensuring that you're building something that you'll be proud of at the end of the five days. And just close to that, you know, workshop and office hours is the mentorship um, um, relationship as well. With, with our boot camps, we hope that the relationship doesn't end after, during the boot camp. After the bootcamp, you also get to be a part of, you know, the wider Stellar community and then also learn from others who have gone ahead of you in building their solutions. And yes, the sweet spot as well is that you get to pitch these ideas that you've come up during the, the bootcamp. Um, this year, we're introducing actually two types of um, demo days. So there's a community demo day and then the investor demo day. The community demo day is where you get to share your demo video with uh, members of the Stellar community. And then the members, members of the community then select the top 10 finalists who then uh, move over to participating in the investor demo day. And at the investor demo day, the top 10 finalists then get to pitch live to the investors and the jury, and then get the chance to be the top three um, winners for, for the bootcamp. Um, and then, of course, after after pitching to the investors and the jury, you get a chance of winning um, a total sum of prize, I think 30,000 XLM um, for the first to third um, top three participants. So what is the bootcamp schedule or what is the design sprint activity is going to look like? Um, so from day one to day five, there are dedicated activities that as a, as that has been our portion for each day. For day one, we're majorly going to be focusing on defining your problem. And my um, colleague, Joey, would give you a sense of the kind of activities that you know, um, features in day one. But day one is just all about defining your, pro your problems, coming up with ideas, mapping out a customer journey. And then day two, you get to focus on your solution and deciding which of the solutions that your team has put together, which of them would have the best chance to succeed. And then in day three, you get to make them focus on prototyping and creating your storyboard based upon the solution that you've decided in day two. And then in day four, which is one of the interesting um, days in the bootcamp is you actually go out there to um, test out your solution with real customers, you get their feedback and then you implement. And then based off on all the activities from day one to day four, after you've put together all the feedback, then you have to create like your demo day video and then you share um, at day five. So my colleague would speak on um, the some of the day one sprint activities that ideally we usually um, engage with participants at our um, bootcamp. Over to you, Joseph. Thanks, good. Um, hi, guys. Um, so, like you've said, um, we have a bunch of activities during the week. And um, the reason why we <clears throat> tend to like go over day one is because day one is like certainly like the most important part of it um, and basically sets you up for the rest of the week. Um, so, the one is around, you know, defining your problems, um, you know, with your app or with your business as a whole. And it's focused on um, like a couple of sec sec like sec sections, you know, during the one, but we like to talk about your long-term goal metrics and sprint questions. Um, and why this is important is because this is like the foundation for everything you're going to be doing. So <clears throat> basically your long-term goal is, you know, a very optimistic view of like, you know, the world in a couple of years, 
um, with regards to what you are building. So, you know, if if it goes well, what does the future look like? Um, and if you're able to kind of think about this, it's almost like setting up the vision, vision for your product. It's like, okay, so this is like a very good base from where we want to start from. Um, and then you go on to your sprint questions and you're like, oh, okay. Um, oh, sorry, your metrics. And your metrics are like, okay, for this to be true, for this long-term goal to be true, what are the key metrics um, that we're supposed to have? So it's typically um, one or two. Um, some people will say, you know, we have 500,000 active users. <clears throat> some people will say um, we have x amounts in revenue that you know that kind of thing um so one example we have here for long-term goal and metrics is um from cash abroad from the last um boots camp um and their long-term goal was to be able to move value across latin borders for businesses and uh, you know in the long run <clears throat> make the world um borderless um in terms of like you know moving money and their metric was, you know, having six million businesses move five billion um, um, USD annually, and so that's like, you know, that's very optimistic, and that's like a metric that you set for that. It's it's just like, okay, in a very optimistic version of the world, what does this look like in the long term? Um, we typically advise that you put like a time, you know, a time limit, but it's it's you know, some teams don't, and that's fine too. Um, and then you go on to sprint questions and sprint questions with sprint questions. You're basically saying, okay, basically what can stop us from reaching our long-term goal, right? Um, you have a couple of examples from the company that's, um, that we just showed and they asked a bunch of questions and it's like, this time you're taking like a pessimistic approach, you know, what can go wrong? Um, so for example, um, one of their questions is how do we make users feel feel secure? Because of course, um, security is like a key part of you know um, basically moving money for customers. And it's like if customers don't trust you or if they don't feel secure, then things won't go well. You won't be able to meet that long term goal. Um, you know how do we get li liquidity from banks? Um, how do we leverage Stellar? Yeah, asking these questions because these are the key questions, like you know, things where things can go wrong, where you know you don't achieve what you you already plan to achieve. Um, and the dots you see are basically, you know, votes. You get we'll get more into that, you know, once you 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 get into the program. Um, and basically you're voting on what what key sprint questions should you focus on. So if you, you know, as a team decide to focus on, say, um, based on your voting, say three to four questions, those, those questions are kind of going to determine what you now work on. Okay, so this is the most important, you know, thing that we should solve right now um, with regards to achieving our long-term goal. And every other thing we're going to do is going to rest on, you know, this couple of things. Um, so you go from that um, to what we call mapping. Um, and with mapping, basically, you're just going through the users, you know, trying to present the flow of the um, of, of how the user uses your app or, or, your, or your service. Um, and it's basically trying to, along with your sprint questions and your long-term goal, it's just trying to help you focus on, you know, a key moment of the user journey. So, you know, from sign up to onboarding, to maybe making their first transaction, to doing you know different things. What what are the like, key parts? Um, and you kind of come up with this based on again things you've come up with in your sprint questions, like those those concerns you have. Um, I know as a team what you feel like the biggest focus should be, um, and so you come up with that map. And that map is basically very essential because it, it's kind of like okay, this is the it sets the foundation for like the solutions you're going to focus on, you know, on day two and then expand on on day three. Um, so those are like, you know, key activities that you go through on day one. Um, in, you know, you, you end up like having what we call like, you know, the how might we questions, 
where you're like, okay, so for all these problems or for all these steps in the journey, how might we solve the problems that have come up in the sprint questions that we came up with? You know, how might we, if for example, you know, here it's like how might, might, might we um, create the relevant QR for the address of the store? How might we make sure that we apply the right net, the right fees per network? These are like, you know, key questions, you know, you're, you're like asking. Again, you vote on your how might we use um, as a team, and then you go ahead to like say, okay, this is now what we're focusing on as a key solution, you know, on day two. Um, as you can imagine, this is like a very, um, it's a very, for lack of a better way to put it, it's a very kind of team focused <laughs> um, group of activities. And that, this is what you'll be doing, you know, throughout, throughout the like, you know, the, the boot camp. It's like working with your team, thinking through different problems, um, you know, trying to come up with solutions. Um, you know, we've had teams say, oh, we've never really had time to like sit down like this and really go back and forth um, because we're just moving on the fly. But right now, um, with your startup, boot, with the bootcamp, it's like, okay, we can focus on these things. We can talk as a team. We have key members from the team who can help us think through different, you know, um, problems and come up with solutions. And you, you have like a lot of conversations that you typically, many teams typically don't have when they're just doing their, their normal day to day. Um, so this is how many of the teams have found it really helpful um, just, you know, in terms of like team interaction. Um, so you, you know, again, as you get closer to um, the, the, the bootcamp days, we'll share more information on this. Um, we typically push teams to try to dive into this even before coming to the bootcamp, you know, maybe like a week, depending on how much time you have, like a week before. Um, and thinking through this because we find that many teams get stuck here. And again, you can imagine if you don't have a solid foundation, then the rest of you know the events is just going to be shaky for you. Um, so we encourage and we provide resources. Um, we have like videos um, that we encourage teams to like go through and try to start thinking of these things before day one, just so like you come kind of like solidly pre prepared for for this. Um, so yeah, that's like you know an overview of the activities. Um, I'll hand over to Gift again to like um, take it from here. Okay, thank you, Joey. Um, so what are some of the additional perks and benefits? I, I mean, I spoke about how you get to meet mentors and you get to be a part of the wider community. But what, what I did not mention is that for the top 10 finalists that get to uh, move over to the investor demo day, you get to get featured as one of the SCF founder under the SCF founder stories. And this gives you like a really huge opportunity to, you know, be a part of the wider SCF network as it pertains to future um, potentials, you may be getting an SCF awards. And you will see eventually in our next slide, some of the success stories from past bootcamp participants that you know made good use of that additional perk. Um, another thing is, yes, you get to get exclusive support from the members of the um, Stellar Development Foundation, Stellar, Cerebon Ecosystem, and the community. Um, the SCF bootcamp will be hosted on the Stellar Discord. So that means that you are already, by being on the Discord, you get you're already um, sure that you're going to get be getting those exclusive supports. And then of course, the, the um, top three prizes worth um, $15,000 worth of XLM. Um, so these are like some of the success, more success stories. You heard from Nabarun from Autify Network who passed through the program. Um, these are other examples of some success stories that we've seen you know, in the past. Um, bootcamp that we've had. Um, we've had Funbok who received a marketing grant from Stellar Development Foundation. They passed through the bootcamp and they went to create a platform where users can trade prepaid airtime credits for crypto. Um, Stacks, on the other hand, which is another interesting um, um, company who passed through the bootcamp. When Stacks came into the bootcamp, they got the initial award of 15,000 worth of XLM through the SCF bootcamp. And then eventually, by just being a part of the SCF community and being exposed to, you know, um, solutions that you can build to get potential SCF awards, they got um, five thousand 
I say $5,000, dollars $5, um, from the Stellar Matching Fund. So this is just like another um, opportunity that you get when you get to participate in the bootcamp. And of course, Wire Cash last year um, benefited um, by passing through the bootcamp and got awarded um, $100,000 worth of XLM and of course Anchan Chain got um, 195,000 worth of XLM through SF. So all of these companies are building amazing, amazing, you know, solutions, either um, being building on Stella. And the cool thing is that for this bootcamp, you're not just building on Stella, but you also have the potential to build on Soroban, which is Stella's new smart contract platform. Um, so this is where we get to take a pause. We know we've been talking and talking. This is where we get to take a pause and then hear from you if you have any question that you want us to respond to, especially as you're potentially planning to participate in the bootcamp. So you can feel free to unmute yourself and then um, ask your question. Does anyone have any questions to ask? Any specific question with regards to the bootcamp or maybe um, from Stella, if you have any questions or even from, you know, um, speakers who had spoken before the... Looks like we have a silent crowd today. Oh, Morgan asked a question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So are the bootcamp teams similar for all regions? Very good question. Um, so this year, the bootcamp is actually going to be happening across three major time zones and three regions like you're already aware of. And all teams do not necessarily have to be similar from each regions. The only, the only thing is you get to, each region gets their specific time that they you know, get to participate in the bootcamp, but it's not like all regions have, you have to be working on similar ideas, you know, across all regions. And I hope that answers your question. Thanks, Morgan, for that. Any other question, James, um, Kataramu, um, Chalk, any other questions from you guys? Okay. Great. Um, so in the absence of any question, um, so after the info session, what are some of the next steps, you know, to, you know, take out from, from the info session? We recommend that you read more about the Stellar Community Fund. For everyone who signed up for um, the info session, we would share, you know, useful links where you can find all the information that you need from the Stellar Community Fund, just learning more about the Stellar Community Fund. And then, of course, you get to um, one of the next steps is that you apply for the camp and complete your application before March 28th. And then if you get the opportunity to be selected, we recommend that you plan to give it your best. Um, so yes, that's it. Um, thank you guys for joining. I don't know, Anka, if you want to say anything just before we call it a day. Yeah, yeah, sure. Well, thank you so much, Gift and Joseph, for explaining this. And thank you so much to our, our awesome speakers, uh, Nabarun and Joseph um, for speaking and sharing a bit about your experience. It's really awesome to hear from the teams. And I think, um, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited for what's to come. I know we have like four, oh, I'm, I'm going away for a bit, but I'm a, we have like a few in procession of this. And so like, hopefully that's enough chances for people to get really get to know what's happening at the bootcamp. And really like uh, from uh, the pre previous few boot camps we did, it's, it's like a really wonderful experience for teams, uh, especially if you're kind of just getting started on Stellar. It's like you have been, you can really kickstart your product development, which is essential, especially in the early stage of development. But actually, um, we've like last, especially last boot camp, we've also seen teams really, uh, uh, oh, well, I'm 
sorry, my background's uh, <laughs> interested. We've also seen people really um, grow, even though they had already an existing product on Stellar and they were able to like launch a new feature or use the design sprint process to um, solve a specific problem. So it can be for all types of teams as well. Yeah, so thanks so much team. Uh, that's all I wanted to say. And if you have any questions, yeah. please feel free to reach out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Katarina just actually just asked a question. Is interested in participating in the bootcamp and has ideas but don't have a team. Um, any support I can get in that line? <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, for sure. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, do you want to go gift or shall I? I? I could go first. So ideally, we recommend that teams should have um, two to five members in their team. But we've also had instances where a team can actually just be made up of one individual. And um, for us at, at the bootcamp, we, we, we ensure that for a one man team, we ensure that with your facilitators and with um, the supports, we we'll definitely will make that support available to ensure that you are also able to make the best of the bootcamp. Yeah, to kind of add on to what Gift said, we also you try to match people so that we'll so depending on what your um, knowledge is with the um, the Stellar Network or Sorbonne, um, you we can we try to match people with existing developers. Or if you want, uh, we highly encourage you to go over to the Stellar Developer Server. And I'm going to pop the link. Sorry, my uh, I I'm just going to turn off my video real quick. It's acting up. And um, so I would highly recommend to go to the Stellar Developers Discord and also reach out and tell a bit about what you're doing and what you're looking for. I'm sure there are going to be people that will be interested. And if not, we can also try to help match, um, match you to existing developers or people in the space that might be interested in working with you. So yeah, uh, for that, probably like the best way is to shoot us an email uh and kind of with explain your situation and uh, reach out oh morgan to the rescue <laughs> thanks morgan yeah let me add the actual link to this as well and i'm on my phone because zoom didn't work on the other thing but i'll i'll add the link to here as well thanks Anka. and we could also include a link in the email that would go out after the info session um if that also helps as well. Okay, um, thank you so much guys for joining and thank you for asking your questions. We've, we're really looking forward to receiving your applications and really just you know having that uh, opportunity to, to get to work with you as well as you try to um, build on your, on your solution or your idea. Right, thanks Chuck. We'll, we'll definitely be looking out for your applications as well. <laughs> Okay, guys, um, have a good rest of your day. And yes, feel free to shoot us an email if you have like any existing questions. And Anka just shared the link to the Discord channel on the chat box. Um, feel free to join as well and also reach out to the wider community uh, on, the, on the platform. Okay, guys, um, have a good rest uh, of your day. Sorry, real, real quick, uh, if you guys could share in that email the Twitter handles for everyone that spoke today, it'd be great um, to follow on Twitter. All right. Okay. Okay, yeah, sure. Thank sure. Thanks for flagging that here. We definitely will do that. <laughs> All righty. Bye, guys. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye. Bye, guys.